So I will show you um, my experiences with the new device, uh, which is an intra, intra uh, circular flow diverter. It's a braided double layer nitinol disc. You place it inside the aneurysm and um, pull it down to the neck and it will divert the flow from the sac to the parent artery. It consists of 144 wires. They are kept together at the detachment point at the uh, centrum. Uh, it goes through an O27 microcatheter. It's retrievable, electrically detachable, and the sizes <coughs> that are available currently is five, seven, nine, and 11 millimeter. And it means that the largest uh, aneurysm that we can see the diameter is, is 8.5 millimeter. So this is how the device looks. And uh, what you can see here, all the, uh, Oh, so the mouse doesn't work on the picture. Okay. This is very tight. You don't have any pointer. This is very tight here. And you can see the last tighter outside. So. Uh, so this is how how it is deployed. I hope it no probably it will not work. Of course, because it's not my computer. Yeah, but there is no, the, I cannot push. Yes, but where is it? Yeah. So, what is the return? Yes, it doesn't work. Because it would be very important to show you what to do. Because what I wanted to show you is that when the... Um, is that my, wow so look at carefully so when the uh, device reaches the uh, the walls of the sack it will be fixed by by friction and when you push push the the wire the pusher wire you can test if the device is stable you see it so the you, the, the more you push, the more it will get out and get the friction. So thank you very much. This was one of the most important slides. One beer. So, uh, so the next image, if you, you see how the, why, why this diameter is important. So this is 8.5 millimeter, the, la the largest one company is working on it, so they will make it up to 40 millimeter size. So I think 12 millimeters uh, diameter aneurysm would be possible to treat in the future. <clears throat> so when you push the pusher wire, you will see the uh, movement and the angulation is changing. And uh, it, it, it is also a test whether or not the device is stable. And just think about that, remember it, because I made a mistake and I will share you my mistake also because then you can avoid it in the future. So it's altogether uh, 10 aneurysms were treated in Odense in nine patients, uh, three ACOM. It's, it's easy to get everywhere, actually. A2, MCA, basilar tip, so everywhere. 27, 27. Um, I started to use the, the Striker, the uh, XL27. Uh, it is a little bit soft. So if you need um, some, uh, some the, the, the access to the aneurysm is angulated, it's not direct, then it's better to use a VIA or I used also the, the Marksman. Um, it is, by, I, I learned it by during the learning curve. Uh, so I, I pre-medicate all the patients and we, we perform very fine now testing. It works well for us. Um, I fully agree otherwise that the uh, clopidogrel is unreliable. The results measured on the same day on the same patient can go up and down by 50. So it is, it is not a good drug. I, I agree with that. So eight patients remained on this double platelet inhibition in, in for three months, and I continue with with uh, uh, salicyl with additional three months, and one patient I took off too early, 
So I made another mistake. And then I had to restart the double antiplatelet therapy twice in this patient. And I will show you that case also. So um, and in one case, there was one coil placed in the sac. It was a little special case. So now I will show you some cases. This is a lady that had a subarachnoid hemorrhage and was treated in another institution. And then she came back to us, not came back, came to us. And this was, this was the, the follow-up. She belonged to our territory in Denmark. So this is like, a, um, it's not a basilar tip aneurysm. These vessels are the superior cerebellar arteries. You see, this is a very small. The distal part of the basilar is, is occluded. So this patient is on lifelong clopidogrel therapy. But you see that the vessels are very narrow, very small. So I could not see any good way to treat this aneurysm without, uh, without some adjunctive device. If I pack it with coil, I was not sure if it will, would be um, durable. So this was the idea to place something at the neck here. And if it could occlude the aneurysm, I would be happy. So this is the... Uh, This is the uh, follow-up image uh, in January, and this is the 3D reconstructed image. You see the, the measurement, very narrow vessels. Also, this portion is narrow. So the device is placed in this. These are the working projections. The device is placed at the neck. See here the, uh, the assembly point, this one. This is also the detachment point. And the, now when the device is detached, then you see that the pusher wire will move from this. And this is the final angiogram. And this is the follow-up at six months. So the aneurysm is much smaller. The remnant is much smaller. And considering that the patient will be on lifelong uh, clopidogrel, I'm happy with this result. And um, I'm, I'm quite sure it will not uh, grow because it went to the other way. Second case. These these patients were treated on a compassionate uh, basis because the, the, the device is not actually, I just got the message that the device got the C mark. Yesterday, they approved it. So uh, this is uh, the, 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 the latest news. So this, sorry? Excellent news for the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Unfortunately, I don't have any shares because yesterday you got the question from Jacques. I am so stupid that I missed all these opportunities. This is why I still fly on economy and uh, take the both. I am clean. Is it forbidden? No, it's a. We, I don't think so because I know about people that have. So, now what about? Yeah, we take it later. Coffee break. <laughs> yeah. Since I don't have, I'm transparent. I'm clean. So, so this was a, this was a big aneurysm, and you see, it looks like a big aneurysm. It's an elderly gentleman. The people who who are uh, more qualified than Emma than me. They said that there are evidence that this aneurysm ruptured. And then this, we discussed with the surgeon, so they said, okay, he is old. We take the patient in and do a, an angiogram and see what to do. But there was also CT angiogram. It was a little bit difficult to understand whether or not this is an aneurysm. It was partially thrombosed. This, is, this was the conclusion, what we got. And uh, then the angiogram showed this, this image, and this is this is the 3D reconstructed image. So the whole big thing that was on the MR, this was the lumen. This was the open lumen. It's a little bit tricky because uh, this branch came from the neck. This, this is a very, very small uh, diameter uh, vessel. So it is difficult to treat, treat this again. So I, I was lucky because the, the company uh, um, was in Odense, so they had the device and I said, okay, let's, let's use it. But first I went to the, uh, that portion and put one coil 
And this is the coil that I will talk about in my next presentation. So this is one three by 10 coil coated by shape memory uh, foam. And uh, then I put the device at the neck because I wanted to save the, uh, the branch here. And this is the angiogram after the device. And this is the final angiogram. And this is the follow-up six months. What we can see is that the, this portion is totally occluded. This one got smaller again uh, to be able to, to save this branch. I think we have to accept this, that there is still some flow in this part of the aneurysm. So I am, I'm... What is this? No, no, I think this, I think this, you mean this, this, I don't know, I don't know. There was no evidence for any thromboembolic complication. I, maybe, maybe something in, in the, in the, maybe in the, the central portion, thrombos, maybe, I don't know. But I'm happy with this. So then came the case, which is uh, the first challenging one. This patient had two aneurysm, one at the basilary tip and one at the, at the right MCA. This is the basilary. If you check carefully, then you see that it was a, a borderline the size. It was almost uh, at the level of uh, being too big for the, for the device, the largest device. Wide neck aneurysm, I, I like this. Uh, I don't like to, to treat small aneurysms with new device and just to show that it is efficient. This is, I think it's bullshit because if it doesn't work in a challenging environment, then I, I don't think it has any role. So this is the first aneurysm. Uh, then I use the XT27 here, place the device. Is it visible? Can you see it? Yeah, okay. Because I hardly see anything here. Um, so this was the largest contour, 11 millimeter detached. I waited 25 minutes, why? Because this ventral portion of the sac that you can see here, this was bigger. So uh, the, uh, the engineer, and now he's the CEO of the company, he said, since the device does not have contact with the wall here in the front, he cannot guarantee the stability. And I said, okay, let's wait and see. Because the buzzer, it would be every half it would be the push. If it will be stable, then we we'll try to detach anyhow. So we detached after 25 minutes, and I, I think it was quite good. Um, and this is the follow up at seven months. Here I made the mistake that I took off the patient from the platelet inhibition after six weeks. She developed uh, TIA in the right MCA territory. I will show you that aneurysm. It looks much worse than this one. So I had to put back her again at least three months, three, uh, six weeks, took off her, and then she developed again TIAs, and then I continued until seven months, the, the double. So this, at that time of the angiogram, she was still on double platelet inhibition. And what I can see here is that the flow in the aneurysm is slow, and the stagnation is there, but it's not occluded. Yes, double, double. Um, so this is the MCA aneurysm. It's an ugly one. It's a very wide neck. It's very shallow. It's difficult to, to place any device inside. It would be possible to do with, sorry, with double stenting uh, like that. And you see there are several blebs on the uh, distal portion of the aneurysm. This is also a challenging aneurysm, and this is a difficult one to treat. So I like it. So what I did, I, I went uh, with the catheter and very carefully placed the device inside the neck, uh, in, inside the sac. But I had to have the assembly point far outside in the parent artery. So you see here, the device is from here to here. This is the nine. This is the diameter of the device. But to be able to be to be uh, able to to deploy it to to be uh, safely uh, fixed to the vessel wall, I had to take a big one that will come out to the parent artery. And yes, this small one. But I just left it. 
I, I, I didn't care. So, so I waited 40 minutes here before detachment. And what you see after 40 minutes, you see that the blebs are much less filled. I said, it is okay. Both branches are filled normally. So I said, it is possible. So now I replace, you see, I replaced it to a smaller one, nine. Your point was good because it was 11 for, I replaced it to a smaller, this is easy to, and then, then it was more space around the device for the blood. So this is the final angiogram, and this is the follow-up at seven months. And what you can see here, the aneurysm got smaller, all the blebs uh, are uh, uh, thrombosed. I like it, sorry. I like this result, but it's still not uh, fully occluded. So, uh, but the device is here. Yes. The yes. Right. Yes. The device. So, so there is still filling after yeah. sec, and it's the same with the vascular. yes, but you know the sac is here. Yeah. The device is here in the parent artery, so it has to be filled. So far, this patient still on double platelet inhibition at that point, she is due for a CT angiogram next Tuesday. Uh, probably in Valdezer, I will have uh, the results and I can, I can show you. I hope this looks better. And now she's okay. I spoke with her on Friday um, and uh, she has no clinical uh, uh, sequelae of these uh, TIAs. She's happy. She's waiting for a, for a final result. So I didn't want to do any angiogram before I see a CT angiogram, how it looks. So, so this was an easy case, uh, a small uh, azygos pericarbosal aneurysm. I put catheter easy. And why I want to show it, it's because uh, to, to tell you, to show you how important it is where you place the device. So it was a seven millimeter contour, very good stagnation in the sac. Final angiogram looks good. Follow up looks good, but not perfect. There is still some inflow in the aneurysm. Why? Because I should have pulled back the little bit the device. The device should have been at the neck, not only the marker. If you if you look back. So I, I had the marker here. I, I would need to pull the device more so it should get outside the parent artery to get the, the good result the, to occlude the whole aneurysm. So this is the learning curve. Next case, also learning curve. 55 years old male. She had two aneurysm, one uh, left MCA, one PCOM. Surgeon wanted to clip both, but he could not clip this. He said it was too, too low and okay, so I was happy to get this, of course. It looks like that and check the, 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 the measurement. So I told you the largest one should be 8.5. This is larger than uh, 8.5. And uh, then the company said that it is probably too big for the largest device. And that I said, okay, let's try it on my responsibility and see what it will will get. So this is the um, working projection and this is the device placed. Um, and this is the, uh, yes, this is the largest one. This is where I deployed the device, but I had it more uh, proximal that gave exactly the same good um, uh, stasis in the aneurysm. And then I detached, I waited and I said, okay, let's detach it and see what will happen with this one. This is the final angiogram. This is the follow-up. And if you check, you see that probably one third of the aneurysm is still open. And then if you check the native image, the device is not big enough because, because the blab of and the aneurysm was over nine millimeter. So the device was not stable enough. And this is what I made the mistake why I wanted to show you the, the video, the deployment. It has, I did not do this testing. I did not push because I felt it was on the borderline. If I push it, we jump in. It was so beautiful that uh, I, I wanted to make it uh, work, but it didn't. So 
we have to follow all the uh, company advices. The device did not move, but it does not have the force, the stability, if it is not, uh, the aneurysm is bigger than ideal. So 49 years old lady, ACOM, wide neck, nine millimeter device, final angiogram, full up seven months, small feeling still. I, when I went through all the patients, almost all of them that had some feeling were either on some kind of, uh, uh, they were all, all um, some kind of uh, anticoagulant treatment, either platelet inhibition or, or warfarin. She was on lifelong warfarin and I did not check this before I performed the treatment. I, I, I saw that it is a nice aneurysm. So I discussed with this and I found out that the indication for lifelong warfarin is not strong. I discussed with the coagulation paper, we stop this, we will do another follow-up and see, because I'm convinced that the reason of the feeling is that uh, the patient, the, the aneurysm cannot thrombose if the patient is on warfarin, of course. So, so finally, I show you a nice case. This is a uh, 52 years old, a little bit tricky aneurysm because it's wide neck and the axis is a little bit uh, asymmetric. Uh, I like it very much because when I place the device, first I put an 11, I felt it was a little bit too big. So I took it back, I replaced it with a nine and I saw it was good. I didn't want to have too much outside. This happened 10 minutes later. So the whole aneurysm got occluded immediately. Patient is fully inhibited. Check, verify now, detached. I went, I went and punctured the other side to check the flow in the other side because the acom was also blocked. There is a small A1 here, but the pericolosal artery was filling. So then after that I detached and uh, this is the final angiogram and this is the follow-up at six months, beautiful. And this is the original. So you see here, the, the anatomy is, is reconstructed. There is also some flow in the right pericolosa, but it blocked mostly for. So this is how it should look when the patient is not on warfarin, when the aneurysm is not bigger than ideal, and when I place the device in the right uh, place at the aneurysm. So I, I got good immediate results. All, in all cases, there were no complications. Uh, Periprocedural. I got two complications. These were thromboembolic. Uh, in uh, this was my fault. Both are fully recovered. No, no. This is just sorry one. Just she recovered fully, and uh, uh, the the DSA at six months showed good results in four, but still some flow in the remaining five aneurysms, and just got one total occlusion at six months, which is not so good, but. All of these patients were either on warfarin or downward platelet inhibition. So the, it is easy to work with the device. In my experience, this is thrombogenic. So I would suggest everyone to use it to, to have the patient on double antiplatelet regime and don't take them off too early because it's, it's a bare metal in the parent artery. It's very efficient. It can block the flow. And I hope I will be able to show it on Tuesday that the, these aneurysms are also occluded, but we have to pay the, the, uh, the price for that. And I think that it is too early to do follow-ups at six months, but this was the, uh, the request from the company because the notified body and all these uh, agencies want to have six months follow-up. So this is why they did it. So thank you very much. I'm happy to answer all questions. Yeah, thanks, Jura, for the, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a nice way of presenting to show us all the tricks and tips and also the things that didn't work. But I think you, you live in paradise uh, as a neurointerventionalist with uh, neurosurgeons that do not want to clip uh, MCAs and do not want to clip PCOMs. So probably have more than 100% more than 
uh, endovascular treatment of aneurysms. No, not maybe at like all. 100, so, no, no, but to, to be honest, I really do not understand that completely because uh, you definitely will discuss those cases. And, and okay, in a 70, 70 year old, you might discuss, uh, but uh, I still have a problem because it's a partially thrombosed aneurysm that, well, your colleagues from radiology said it has probably been has ruptured. So then a partial treatment literature shows that's a bit tricky, isn't it? Uh, so in a previously ruptured aneurysm that is part that is not completely occluded, has a fair chance of, of uh, re-rupture. The other no. one, the second one was, I think, also uh, probably a surgical case. Uh, so how do, how, do, how do you see that? So you try to convince them or you think, well, I like it because I like to do uh, new uh, implants and that's fun. So what's, yeah. I, I'm curious how you see that. Yeah. Because uh, this is not standard, I think, for neurosurgeons to, to see this. Uh, I think in many hospitals, there will be other opinions. Are you finished? Because I tried to speak five times, so you've continued, okay. So the MCA, the patient was 77 years old. The surgeon didn't want to touch because it was a very big aneurysm. It was a two centimeter partially thrombosed aneurysm. They had no interest to operate. The PECOM, he explored because he wanted to clip. He went for an MCA afterwards he felt that he could not get uh, a safe uh, access to the PECOM aneurysm. He stopped and he was not a bad surgeon. This is why he, he left me. Afterwards, they operated again because what I told them is I can pl place a stent and place two coils and this is, this is easily done. But he didn't listen to me because then he felt that now he has the chance to operate. Due to the fact that the other patients were on warfarin or platelet inhibition, surgeons didn't want to touch them because they are not ideal to operate because then you have to take off from, from the platelet inhibition from the warfarin to, to impose the pa uh, patients to risk for thromboembolic complications. So I didn't fight at all for these cases. No, no, I, I, I didn't need I'm to. We discuss all the cases, and well, you are neurosurgeon. Yes. But shall we go through all the cases I showed you, and you tell me which one you could think about operating. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, no, I don't think the genes are different. I have two questions. Yes, please. Uh, number one, how do you compare it with web device, for example? Any, I mean, advantages, disadvantages? And regarding the sizing, uh, what I understand is for an uh, eight and a half millimeter aneurysm, uh, you take 11. Correct? Yes. So I understand that you oversize at least for two and a half millimeter. We have to, to get the uh, the stability. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, I, I got yes. that because yes. it's halfway around. Yes. So it has to uh, stay at the neck yes. region, shouldn't move. Yes. So how do you select uh, the sizing of the device and how do you compare it with web device? Now, I think that 
I got enough experience after these 10 aneurysms that I can uh, think about and, and take. But at what you saw, I put uh, several times a bigger one first because I said, wow, I, I don't want to have any, any risk that the, the uh, device would be pushed inside the aneurysm. It, it never happened except the case that I didn't have any bigger device. I would happily use a bigger one, but there was not. And the company said, this is not a very safe uh, case. And I said, you know, the worst case could happen. This is that I got a partial remnant. This is my responsibility. I took it and uh, I, I, I have to admit this, this could have been better, but since the surgeon already explored the patient and he couldn't clip it, this is, I said, okay, I go ahead and perform. Regarding the web, the original web company disqualified me from uh, using the web because I use the, the Luna, which is half uh, of this, the distal portion occluded. So it was a global. So I never had the chance to use the web. And later on, I said, fuck you, if you didn't want me on board, so then I don't want to use the web. So I never use the web like Jivan. Yes, because then they said, yeah, then they took me to the course. They wanted to involve me. And I said, okay, when I get a case that I cannot treat with COIS. During five years, I did not get any case that I could not treat safely with COIS. So I didn't use, but I've seen many cases and I've seen many recurrences. And I've seen also rupture with the distal small uh, part of, yes, a small part that went to the wall. So I think this device is less dangerous than the web. Uh, we don't have enough experience. It will start now because, because the uh, device just got the C mark. But in my opinion, it is probably less dangerous to put in <coughs> aneurysm. And the last case that I showed shows that the uh, also ruptured aneurysm can be occluded in 10 minutes. So I would not hesitate to use it if, if the case is optimal, if you have the sizing optimal, I would not have any, any uh, issues to use it for. It's, it just seems like, um, I'm not, the, the, the clip versus cruel argument is kind of dead. I'm not doing that anymore, but um, the, it seems to me with the, the absence of that distal part, web versus this, that you can't, compress as well right so that so that you're you're a little bit restricted in terms of your ability to push you in. you push the right button yeah, yeah. to show me that well, i can but i can test the stability yeah. but that's silicon right yes but yeah it so, is I mean, that's the, silicon we know that we know it never works right yeah so no in the other thing i'm looking because I, I saw here i saw a whole bunch of neck remnants at the end now we may be early but i see a whole bunch of neck remnants and, and i wonder you were you were pointing out that twist which is a little bit more dense where the where the button is, and but in each of those cases, either the button is it it, it doesn't look like it, it squares like this. It looks like it comes in, which is the good thing which, because well, it's for the vector. I think that's I think that's why you're seeing flow coming on either side of it. But this is what I want. I think the web has a bad shape yeah. because the web does not divert the flow. The web closes the flow, but it does not have this through the working effect. This is what I see on the, on the uh, and especially the first web. That was even worse. Which is, yeah, well, I, yeah I, I never used it until the second web, but yeah. Well, well one case you are, uh, the contour is change the, the diameter is wide. Because I put it in a too big aneurysm. Yes. It was, it was, it did not change, but it was not stable enough. No, no, but uh, <coughs> so the image, the, the, the contour is totally. Yes, because it needs. This, this not, no, no, I, I don't see never with the uh, web. You it's don't changed. see it never? <laughs> it's I change. have seen it hundred, hundred see, times. It's possible to see? Yeah, of course. One, one uh, and a piece here, after, Six months, the is compressed. 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 Yeah, the compressed. web can fold. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. web can compress. Yeah. Okay. So how the fuck? I don't know how to manage this. Yes. 
it's equal to Cori compaction that we see. Right. Hey, you need to look at the beam. I just wonder if the amount of effort that I have to go have anything finding. Yeah, but yeah, I tried to go there, but. Uh, Yes, I want to, to get to that image that shows the, no, no, I want to see all the images, all, all the slides. Can you make it happen? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. I think um, there's, uh, there's one also question about the difference between web and uh, consumer is uh, you don't have to Look so this is what I what I took just to, to show you that if if this diameter is is bigger than than the, the device, then it's not stable enough. And this is this is my mistake. I show you to avoid if you ever want to use it. You don't understand. If you put a small coil in an aneurysm, the small coil will go in. So you have to you have to take the right size. I, I took the wrong size against the company's suggestion because they said don't use it in bigger aneurysm so far. So I don't want to blame the device for that. This is experience for me. What is very interesting though, that the device shuts down the flow in the distal portion of the aneurysm, even if it is not ideally placed. So, so the, the flow diverter effect is very strong. Even it should be here, of course, it would be wonderful result. It's not like that, but this is not the, not the, the fault of the device, in my opinion. This image? You know, the, the, the aneurysm, this is just a small part of the aneurysm. I blew it up. The aneurysm was that big. Yes, yes. Now let's go back uh, higher. Uh, you see the aneurysm? It was, a, it was nine, 10 millimeter large aneurysm. So, uh, yeah. So I have a question for you. Please. I mean, I, I use web quite often too. Uh, and I think what's one thing about the web when you worry about is the height. So you're not only worrying about the width, you're also, also worried about the height. Exactly. And how to, so in this case, do you worry about the height? No. Not See, that's, that's a major, major advantage. This is what I mean also, yeah. because if you can get a size that fits the aneurysm, so you have a stability at the neck, then it can be as big as, as, as it gets. There is no difference. But that might be a good thing if the aneurysm is tubular, but if the aneurysm is spherical, then it's going to be healthy because you adjust your device. You cannot. You have to, you have to oppose the wall where the aneurysm turns upwards. Yes. It, Unless you do it wrong, it's going to be pushed within the aneurysm. The limits here, I think, will go with 12 millimeter because they can do a 14 millimeter device. This is the largest that they can do now. It's not, not available, but this is what they, and, and then it can be probably suitable for 12 millimeter. Bigger so, ones. But also, I mean, one thing in the United States, we're being, I'm very involved with this proctoring thing is, is we have already several deaths from using web. Wow. Yeah. And part of it is because of the harpoon, you know, uh, the things. And, but yes. so, so very interesting uh, you, know, when, you know, when it comes out in unstable system, we use 33. So in the United States already, we started February, it's already documented four deaths. Uh, we're getting up to a thousand cases of poor thing. So I think this is, but also not another thing I've used where we put coils on top and then we put web too. So I've managed it and I put web over web stack it like a stone man. And I've did it in a foul mechanism. So we tried it all these things. I think this is what you can even, I've, if I have control, I would large aneurysm, I would jail a microcatheter 
and put there is, coil. There is another device yeah. that is called Nextent. I submitted also for Louis, but he didn't pick for a presentation. Yeah. And so even with this, I think I One think you could. Gal, the yeah. technically speaking, right? In order to make this device stable, you have to be distal to the equator of the spherical linear building. Not distal, at the level. Well, depending on well, the, if probably it is... it's going to be a little better if you go beyond the equator. Otherwise, there will there might be two problems. First of all, your device is not going to be stable unless you make it stable by putting coil, by putting something. Or the second thing is that the flare end of the device will go toward the wall of the aneurysm, and then if you push it too much, you may rupture. That's why I believe that if, if the aneurysm is tubular, it's a beautiful device. Yes. But if the aneurysm is spherical or ovoid, then you got to take a larger one in order to be distal to the Ecuador and then nicely cover the proximal part of the spheric. Uh, I understand your point, but you don't need to- And it makes a fortune. <laughs> You don't need to get distant to, to the equator. If you reach the equator, it is perfectly enough because, because the friction is not at the very distal part of the device. The friction is everywhere where it, it touches the wall. But if it is, if it is like a, a long aneurysm, then it's of course, it's enough to, to have it like that. If it is a globe, then it should not be bigger than 8.5 as it is now. So it, it is not a universal, remedy for all aneurysms is just just the size uh, right now they will build bigger ones next <laughs>